Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, September 11th, 2022, and I'm Jeff. Kind of. <laughs> In case y'all haven't figured it out yet, things are not normal today. <laughs> I'm Damon. <laughs> I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And hey, welcome to Comes Out Loud, the indeterminate podcast of bare length. God, I can't even get the <laughs> intro right. And I've been on this damn thing for how many years? Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the bare podcast of indeterminate length, episode number 664. And it is another one of these. Just eat it, eat it, eat it. That's right, babies. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about the tasty things we shove in our mouth holes. Mm. That are not men's. I'm just saying. I mean, considering we said eat it, I mean, I know, I know, I don't, I don't digest that. I don't chew on that. I, I mean, if the guy wants it, though, I mean, but consent, <laughs> consent is a thing. Consent is consent but, is a foreplay. Yes, it's it's our foreplay. That's how that works. Oof, By yes. the way, uh, so let's talk about the absence or the awkwardness or the strangeness, whatever you want to call it. Um, Jeff unfortunately has taken ill. It is unavailable. So. That's why this week's episode is not live streaming to YouTube, because my computer equipment cannot handle that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are recording it. Uh, I'm running behind schedule because it took me a while to get things together. But all that said, if anything looks off or sounds off, it probably is. Yeah. Because it's not typical or normal for us. But uh, so, yes, it's a Let's Talk About Food series. This is brand new. Never happened before. To my knowledge, in the history of COL, we are going to discuss state fair foods. Ooh. The 2022 edition, mind you. Ooh. So these are, uh, do I want to say supposedly? Allegedly? <laughs> Allegedly. There we go. They are listed on public websites for four states, which are Iowa, Minnesota, Texas, and Wisconsin. Um, some of the biggest state fairs in the United States here. So for those of you that are abroad, um, buckle up, uh, grab a drink, be prepared, grab a bag in case you need to, you know, kind of have a place to put some, you know, unspeakable mm -hmm. from your stomach emptying if you find any of this nauseous because Americans are disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we be crazy, y'all, when it comes to the food stuff. But, um, you know, it is that time of year. The state fairs have been bringing us new food creations for years upon years. They usually become a fad or a food trend. Some of them carry over into other arenas. Sometimes you see things that start in the restaurant industry and they carry over to the food fair, but not too often because usually food fair is meant to be fatty, salty, uh, possibly sweet and cheap. Um, so we're not talking gourmet highbrow food here necessarily. Or if there is an attempt at it, I don't know if it'll be very good, but we'll just say that. Yeah. So 2022 is no exception to the food experiments that are taking place. So by looking at these four particular states, we're going to see, do Damon and I agree as co-hosts on these yummy offerings? Yummy being the objective term here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Damon is not the world. <laughs> I just, so, Okay. So I went through this, these several states list, and I apologize, I'm, Jim's on his way home, and I was, he was talking to me for a minute, but I was also listening. I That's was okay. listening. 
Uh, but like going through some of these things, I was kind of like, is that a just I'm going to slap something on top of something and that's going to be it? Okay, right. We're gonna get, we're gonna get into that because I think some of these things are not that original, not that intriguing, not that interesting. I think they are more of just a cash grab. But then again, some of these items, they do intrigue my taste buds. They do mm-hmm. um, elicit a reaction from me. Yeah. So or, yeah, I did. One thing I did personally was I looked. I went through all of the list and I picked like from each one one thing that I'd be like, oh. I'll drop the coin to get that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to hope is I have pictures of all of them. And why is that, dear children? If you are watching us on YouTube for the video production version of this, I went ahead and actually got screen cap images of the different foods from the different fairs. But I did not do all of them because there are literally, uh, between these four states, at least 100 to almost 200 items. And we're not. Oh, yeah. We're not reviewing all of them. No, man. No, no. I ain't, we ain't got time for that. Right. Like, right. We, bitch, we were already running late. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have, I think, about two dozen, which might seem like a lot, but we don't have to get super in-depth with these. But for those okay. of you that are watching the video version, you're going to have some nice visuals um, of what these items are. And if you are just listening, we will do our attempt to explain. There may be mm-hmm. a description what these different right. items are. So first up, Iowa State Fair. Uh, what we have up first. Now in Iowa, it's interesting. They don't have a very long list of items. They have just the top three. Yeah. So apparently they've already had their fair and everybody voted. And you get a third, second, and then an overall like... Uh, blue ribbon winner of like the people that went to the fair this is their favorite dish i guess is the best way to phrase it so this is called choice and (laughs) best food best new food finalist yeah yeah so this is pork picnic in a cup right (laughs) so it says twist on a classic summer picnic a cup as seen here clear Uh, Filled with layers of barbecued pulled pork, baked beans, creamy coleslaw, a drizzle of barbecue sauce, garnished with brown sugar pork belly. Mm -hmm. Um, What they left out is at the bottom in this picture is Fritos. Fritos. Corn chips, baby. Corn chips or whatever. Whatever they they want to call it. Right, right, right. (laughs) Right. Not sponsored. We'll call it corn chips (laughs) because we'll keep it central. Um, (laughs) Non-monetized. So... Um, okay, so I'm going to come right out and say this. Um, so this is, for me, awful. Um, (laughs) (laughs) and I will tell you why. Okay. I am not, so I am a big fan, and this is just maybe my obsessive quote, whatever, whatever it might be. I don't like when my foods touch each other. I was thinking in certain ways. Right. Anybody and, who wants a divided plate, baby, this is not it. You are like yeah. full pass. Yeah. This is all of it all at once. And again, given this picture, mm-hmm. my other issue is your creamy coleslaw is, I know it's put on top. But it looks like it's been drizzled with the barbecue sauce on top. Correct. So it's going to, I don't know if your, if your sauce is warm, mm. but everything's going to get warm. So you're going to have warm coleslaw. Right. With everything else. Or lukewarm coleslaw, you know, depending on, you know, what have you. Right. And that's a no for me. Because, and I, I, I'm sure Gary could, will agree to this. Um So it says it is creamy, which to me means that it is probably mayonnaise based. Therefore, warm mayo with like the coleslaw and all that stuff. It's hard. It's hard for me to be like, okay with that. Right. No. and, And so I also am not thrilled by this. I am intrigued. I like the idea of a whole meal in a cup conceptually i'm like okay Mm -hmm. i can kind of get with that i do have Mm -hmm. some issues like you the barbecue sauce drizzled over top of the coleslaw i'm like girl i don't know about that um Mm -hmm. 
like the barbecue sauce to me should actually be over the baked beans. Um, yeah, our, just, it looks like the pulled pork already has them on it. Right, like it's not a super saucy pulled pork, but the fact that the that the corn chips are all the way at the bottom, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to eat my pork belly, then my coleslaw, then I get to my baked beans, then I get to my pulled pork, and then what I've got left is corn Probably chips. Probably soggy corn chips. <laughs> So I'm like, mm. Mm. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to spend your ten dollars or whatever you're charging for this. <laughs> Although the I I do like the idea of brown sugar pork belly. Don't get me wrong. That that kind of like that little that's the yeah I'll say it. That's the only saving grace in this. Because I'd be like, oh, that sounds delightful. Right now, here's the re- reality. If Drew was with me. Because we're foodies that way. And if he was with me and he decided to buy it, I might chip in a couple bucks and I would share it with him. But I'd be like, first of all, you got to eat the coleslaw. Like, I'm just not down with that. Mm. I, I like a vinegar based law. I'm not down with like a creamy kind of mm-hmm. coleslaw. So it's 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 like I might try, but I'm not I'm not spending all my hard earned money for something like this. I'm sure there's yeah. going to be other things. Yeah, there's down, down to be other things. Speaking of other things. So now we have the OMG chicken sandwich. Now, this is also from the Iowa State Fair. This is the second of the third thing. So this is like runner up to the winner. It is described as a chicken breast that is lightly battered, covered in sugar coated corn flakes, fried to golden brown and served on a glazed donut. As if that wasn't enough, it's topped with bacon and drizzled with syrup. It's an OMG combination of sweet and savory. So. Hold on. This is the thing I picked of the things that were there. Okay. Uh oh. Hello. Are you there? Yeah, you're still here, but now you're frozen. Can you hear me? I can. Girl, just getting on my nerves. Can you hear me? Yes, and I can see you. Yay! Is this what it's going to be today? Is this the thing that's going to be? Is this what's going to try me today? Okay, (laughs) here we go. Anyway, as I was saying, (laughs) this was the thing I picked. Okay. Do I love it? That's questionable. Would I try it? Absolutely. Um, Would you share it? I would probably share it. Okay. Because, honey, this is diabetes. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> See, you and I are on the same page because I was like, okay, my pancreas is weeping just at the concept of this. <laughs> right. Like, I, I like the idea. Don't get me wrong. The idea is there. It is a part. It is a fatty thing. Like the donut as a bun. I've heard that happen so many times before. Or as the bread component of a sandwich. Right. Um, that has been a thing. It's been done before. I'm not over, you know, kind of thing. I have a few questions. Um, Is the donut warm? Or are they just cutting up a glazed donut and putting it on there? Mm, Okay. To me, there's, there's, there needs to be either it needs to be cold and like Katie it is. Cause if it's warm, you're going to get glaze all over your fingers. Um, And then I have, I don't know why they went with syrup. They're really playing this off as a breakfast sandwich, I think, but they're not calling it that. Yeah, maybe. Like, that's kind of my feeling. So for anybody watching the video, if you see me looking off screen, it's because I'm looking at my, my tablet and it. I'm looking at the picture in the description here. And like they don't call it a breakfast sandwich, but maybe the only thing that isn't breakfast theoretically about it is the fried chicken breast. Like everything else is breakfast food. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have an egg and it doesn't yeah. have sausage. But that's half bacon, right? And syrup, and it's a donut. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So again, and I don't hate it. I, I I think this would be something again that I would probably share with someone. Um, like get it and split it, maybe two, three ways, depending on 
how big it is. Because right. again, we're just seeing one picture of it. Right. Um, but yeah, the if they had kept the breading as just like a regular like breading and then added the syrup, I kind of would have been okay with it, maybe. Or if they took away both the sugar frosted cereal, what did they call it as opposed to what it's supposed to be? Sugar coated cornflakes. Mm-hmm. Um, um, if they took that out of the breading and maybe added, I need, I need something say, I need something else savory. Like you've got maybe the bacon that might have that element, but there's too much sweet and not enough savory. Okay. So let's swap out the sugar glazed donut for a cornbread waffle. There you go. Okay. There you go. I, I think that's that's doable. So it, it, I, I think you and I would not pass it by. We would probably like look at the menu and talk amongst each other and then be like, can we share this? <laughs> yeah. So like if it's you, me, Jim and Drew, we can cut it into four so that everybody can get a bite. And I think we'll be OK with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would probably be the that would probably be the best thing, honestly. <laughs> of course, also, it would also depend on how much it is, because that's just me and me and my like state fair stuff. Like I'm not dropping 22 bucks for a sandwich no Mm. no that's fair all right next up this is the winner of this year's iowa state people's choice best new food it's called the finisher not your average potato it's an extra large russet potato layered with chopped brisket smoked pulled pork and the rib shacks famous bacon brisket mask and cheese follow that up with a generous uh, amount of gourmet barbecue sour cream and signature garlic butter so we had diabetes in one <laughs> we have a heart attack in this one like what <laughs> I'm not trying to be bad. I know fair food is not meant for like to be healthy. Like I'm just, I'll just call it what it is. Right. We're not eating this seven days a week or even every no. single week. Yeah. This is maybe once in a blue moon. Um, now, okay. So this is a lot. <laughs> well, they do say this is a meal that tastes like the fair in one dish. And I'm like, well, they're not wrong. We've got carbs no. and more carbs. Uh-huh. And meat and mm-hmm. more meat and mm-hmm. dairy mm-hmm. and other dairy. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a complete meal. This is a like if you're eating this on your own, mind you, this is the thing you get like all day. Like this is your right. like I'm gonna sit down and have dinner. This is what I'm going to have. If I'm at the fair like mid afternoon and then it's going into the evening and I don't want to stop on the way home to go pick something up. Like, Oh, is this still available? Okay. Let's have this. Like, or maybe try to share it. Um, it's a hard share. Um, I was thinking about that, Damon. So I'm like, it's definitely shareable in a two. Yeah. Cause the potato theoretically is already like split even down like down the down the lengthwise so i'm um, like you just gotta take a knife and keep that you keep know cutting it. right mm-hmm. and, and you know bifurcate it so it's totally you know eventually separated into two separate parts so then mm-hmm. like it, you get another plate you can share you know move half over to another person again if there was four of you you could theoretically like make it into force at that point um the potato is a lot Mm-hmm. I will say that it's an extra large, you know, rusted potato. There's nothing wrong with them, but potatoes fill you up. So, Agreed. like, my thing is, I don't know if I'm getting enough of the all the other stuff as a ratio to the potato. Right. I'm thinking that people find themselves eating a lot of the stuff and they still have a bunch of potato left over. But that's a guess on my part. I also see that as well. But I could also see, again, I see, I could also see this potentially, like, as you kind of gave the idea of the share, like, split it in half, give it, you know, try to split the toppings and stuff in half. Um, I need to know where the butter is. 
Because if it's not, if it's on the top of the toma- tomato, <laughs> <laughs> tomato, potato, uh, if it's on top of the tomato, <laughs> on top of the potato, girl, um, it's going to be, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good for the potato, which is what I want the butter for. Well, so in the picture that we're looking at, it, mm-hmm. it looks to me like the gourmet barbecue sour cream, I'm using air quotes because that's how they describe it, is is dolloped on the very top. Mm-hmm. And then there does seem to be a, a drizzle of a creamy substance, <clears throat> mm. which I think is the signature garlic uh-huh. butter, uh, garlic rub butter that is melting, that is melting down on the outside of the potato. So I'm yeah. not sure how they do it i mean your point is well taken if it was if they put that inside of the potato first yeah and then layered from there i think that would make a lot more sense because i think you really want that butter with the potato portion right but again you're getting if the mac and cheese is down first as well which is kind of what it's looking like here um you would get that kind of creaminess you know cheesy creaminess from it inside it as well which would probably be a decent substitute Depending on how good the mac and cheese is. I was just just going to say, it better be a creamy mac because if it is not and it's a dry mac, I'm going to be very annoyed. Indeed. So. You need sauce type stuff with the the potato like that. So that happens to be Iowa. Iowa makes it easy on us. They're the first state and there's only three things to talk about. Right. And then we Uh move on to Minnesota. Minnesota. Which has a couple dozen <laughs> items. Uh, if I recall correctly, this is the fair state of our producer who is now convalescing at home. In Texas. <laughs> True. That is now a, a Texas import. Um, so we are not going to go through all 30 some of their things. There's going to be a few. I will admit I kind of skipped around because some things I was mm-hmm. kind of like, well, oh, okay, you know, another stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, seemed kind of familiar. So the first up is called the all quacked up uh, fried farm fresh duck egg uh, atop a shaved smoked ham, aged cheddar, cheese, tomato and spinach uh, served open face on a toasted sour bread dough with a paprika aioli. Mm-hmm. So it's an open face sandwich. It's basically a ham and cheese sandwich, lettuce, tomato um, with a fried egg. However, it's not a, a chicken egg. It's a duck egg. Mm-hmm. So uh, more flavor, more fattiness um, yeah. in a duck egg. And uh, yeah. on sourdough with a paprika aioli. The paprika aioli, honestly, is the part that intrigues me the most. And I hate to say that. <laughs> right, right. No, no, you're not wrong. Like, so this to me is another one of these, like we're slapping things together. Um. It's a ham and cheese sandwich with an egg. Right. But the egg happens to be a duck egg as opposed to a chicken egg. So it's it you get that draw from it. Which I'm you know, again, I'm kind of confused about like would I pass this up? Um, honestly, yeah. Um because it's just a sandwich. Like I, I don't wanna right. be mean, but if I'm going to the state fair, um, I'm gonna need more than, oh hey, it's a duck egg, you know, ham and cheese sandwich. To like draw me in the pa- the paprika aioli does sound interesting, um, but paprika is an odd um, uh, spice. It can be good and kind of um, it could add a little something to something, but it's usually not great on its own. Um, I can, yeah. There's just um, I just again I just need something else. I I probably would need something more than this. Um, don't get me wrong. It's probably good, but with a um, uh, um, but if I'm going to a fair, I don't want a sandwich, just like a like a ham and cheese sandwich. I I, I hear what you're saying. I think for me, it it's based on what I'm in the mood for, and if there are mm. other things that have already like gotten my attention, I guess. Yeah. So if there's other things, then I would probably pass this up. But it right. also depends on where I am and how hungry I am and what's going mm-hmm. on and all that kind of jazz, you know. Like if you have, like for me, if 
again, you're at a fair, maybe you're riding rides, maybe you're just walking around and seeing, you know, different, you know, sites and such. If I happened to be walking by and I saw this, I could have been like, and I was hungry and the rest of the party was hungry and we were thinking of a place to sit down to eat. This might be an option. Right. All right. So uh, next up is something called the mini hot hot. These are smoked rib tips tossed in Nashville hot sauce, and it says it's served with comeback sauce. So the comeback sauce, for those of you that are able to see the video, is that little paper ramekin in the upper top of the picture that kind of looks like a uh, mac sauce or like ketchup and mayo, whatever you want to call it, uh, mixed together. There's some pickles. There's notably some Texas toast uh, mm-hmm. grill that's underneath it to help catch some of the the sauce or the juice um, mm-hmm. from these. But when I look through the stuff, I was kind of like, oh, now this, this grabs my attention. Right. I don't think it's a original quote unquote. Like, I don't think there's anything revolutionary about smoked yeah. rib tips, but I yeah. know that I like them. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so... This yeah. is probably something I would definitely get. And I am not usually a rib fan. I don't like ribs on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably try rib tips because it's usually easier to eat. I'm not a fan of biting meat off the bone bone right. kind of thing. Um, the Nashville hot is going to be why I don't get this because I don't like a lot of heat. Okay, that's fair. So um, if I can get it and, and if I can get it without the natural hot heat on it, and then try the hot, hot sauce as like a, I don't want to say a dipper, but like the taste right. with it, I might be more apt to try it. So what I'm imagining is, is if we were traveling together and I got it, you'd be willing to like take a bite, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, especially if it falls off the bone, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And it just kind of is there. It's just mm-hmm. like, take your fork, take a stab, you know, see mm-hmm. if you like mm-hmm. it or not. Right. Got it. I'd pull some off right. if I could. Nice. All right, so next up is Nordic Waffles, and they have two kinds. This is very interesting. They have a bellyful Nordic Waffle and a vanilla custard dream waffle. So and if you're looking at this picture, um, there's like a the sweet version is the top one, and then the bottom version is the savory. So it says right. two new fresh-made waffle sandwiches. Bellyful is a spring onion-infused Nordic Waffle, so it's savory. With a sous vide seasoned pork belly with coleslaw and locally made jalapeno jam. The vanilla dream is a Nordic waffle coated with cinnamon and sugar and filled with Norwegian vanilla custard cream. So this was actually one of the favorite, the the, the favorite thing out of all of this list that I pulled and was like, oh, this sounds good. Okay. This would make me, both of these would make me like stop and turn and be like, I want to try that. Yeah. Cause the I guess the the savory one with the the, and I'm not a big fan of onion flavor, but I would be tempted because it's a green onion. I think that's what they said. Yeah, spring onion. It's so a, so it's a lighter, onion. fair onion. It's not right. Yeah, it's not like strong. heavy. Right, super strong, but it's also a waffle and it's pork belly and it's like the jalapeno the jalapeno jam. I'd be like, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, but this would be my like, oh, let me try this. I want to try this. And then the vanilla cream and the cinnamon sugar waffle, that just sounds like a great dessert right? on its own. Um, yeah, this is this is this would be good for me. Yeah, the, these are these are definitely high ranking. I agree with you. I'd probably stop, take a gander, get in line without even having seen it yet. Just like purely as, you know, so to speak, a picture and a description. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this next one, which is probably controversial for people. Do we have to? We do. It's called Pickle Pizza. Hand-tossed homemade pizza dough topped with a homemade specialty dill ranch sauce, fresh mozzarella, crunchy dill pickles, and finished with dill weed seasoning. It's from a new vendor called Rick's Pizza. So the picture that we're showing is the full pizza with a slice cut out, and they're they're attempting to... Uh, you know, serve it up, so to speak. It is a sight to behold if you've never seen a pizza, potentially with pickles on it. But I will say this, just think of like an Alfredo pizza um, with instead of pepperoni discs, they're green pickle discs. 
But that's, yeah. that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. So this is a no for me, <laughs> dog. Like, <laughs> okay, let me rephrase. Okay, so would I buy this? Absolutely not. Would I encourage like friends to buy this? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> however, however, if someone else were to buy this mm-hmm. and be like, I want to try this, and I, I would I would ask for a bite. Okay. Cause I am curious. But that curiosity is kind of like, I know I'm not gonna like this. Let me just confirm. <laughs> and that's fair because if anything you get bragging rights to later tell people I've had dill pickle pizza mm-hmm. and then watch their face and then they'd be like oh what the fuck are you doing and I'd be like oh well I mean I didn't buy a whole fu- I didn't buy a whole fucking pizza I bought no I didn't even buy a slice I was like, just I, gonna say <laughs> like my, my, my friend here he bought the whole, like he bought a he bought a slice or two right and I was like um can I have a bite? And he he get let me have a bite. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely try this. I don't have any reservations about this. Um, I do have one thing that I'm intrigued by that I don't know if it will work for people, and that's the specialty dill ranch sauce. And here's why. Because pizza is typically hot, so your sauce is warm, and most people probably think of ranch as a dressing, and they think of it cold. So if they're not thinking <laughs> about this being warm, that may be discouraging or unsettling to them to yeah. eat it. If they're thinking it's going to have like a cold sauce on it, it's like, no, that's not how pizza right. gets made. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you've ever had like a chicken bacon ranch pizza before, or something along those lines, right? That's kind of you're going to kind of get the same thing. The dill part is going to be also is the part that is actually I'm like, hmm, I'm very curious about. That's the curiosity for me. Right. Um, it does say fresh mozzarella and all that stuff. And kind of like so if it to be blunt, if it didn't have the pickles on top of it and it was just like a dill ranch mozzarella like pizza, mm. I might be like, oh, let me let me I might drop a no. Uh, no, let me be honest with myself. I probably still wouldn't because it's just a cheese pizza. Um, <laughs> but, but I, I, you know, if it were to like the thing left, that part without the dill, not without the pickles, right? I'd probably be like, oh, okay, let me, let me, let me give that a shot. Let me give that a try. Hmm. Now I will say this: if you want to up this game, I would put less pickles on, but I would put deep fried pickle slices on. Interesting. So deep fried pickles, for those of you that are not familiar with them here in the country or abroad, um, you literally take a pickle, usually not a sweet pickle. It's usually a, a, a dill garlic kind of pickle. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. come in spears or in um, chips. This is showing chips on this. And that's what I'm thinking of. If you were to have deep fried pickle chips, mm-hmm. put less of them, but strategically place them. So you get like, you know, four or five on a, a slice punch. or maybe three. A depending little on if they're punch big. of the... Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I, could see that. I could see that really being something, you know, as the next iteration of this. But anyways, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> right. So next up, we've got something called a soul sickle. So it's described as fried chicken on a stick topped with candied yam sauce, cornbread crumble, mac and cheese, seasoned cheddar cheese hot sauce, and green onions. <sighs> Y'all, okay. Um, I, I really type in soul sickle in our <laughs> hashtags. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, so they are definitely playing on like southern food, soul food. Like that's really what this is, is mm-hmm, about. Mm-hmm. It's chicken. I get the candied yam sauce. The cornbread crumble kind of yeah. It, it makes it's... me wonder a little bit. And then this description, mac and cheese, seasoned cheddar cheese. And I'm like, huh? Hey, what, what, what is that? I don't like, know. Someone is trying really hard. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, someone is trying really hard to do a little gourmet or like, you know, foo-foo, foofiness for this like thing. Like mac and cheese, 
what season cheese is basically what we're saying here. So it's it's mac and cheese seasoned cheddar cheese. Right. So cheddar cheese. I yeah. know, I know. It, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make sense. But then again, yeah. there's a part of me that's like, people are going to shell out, yeah, cash for this stuff, you know. And it does, like, it does look good. Um, I, I don't know. Um, uh, it's a. It looks like a lot as well. Um, I just don't know if I would want all of this at a like walking around. Or not even maybe not even walking around. If I sat down with, on a plate with this, because I'm trying to figure out. So is, that, I guess that's green onion. Okay, that's green onion. Yeah. So the big yellow thing on the on the left side of the picture apparently is the stick, because it says it's chicken on a stick, but it's not like what we think of traditionally as like elongated. Like right. It looks like a flattened chicken breast that's like you know got a bunch yeah. of stuff thrown on it. So. And that just that and again, I will I will say this to my dying day if you want something to be quote unquote on a stick it needs to be portable on a stick right like you can't make a like hamburger on a stick unless I can take that stick and move it with me right right so anyway no I agree we've run it all right so now we've got something called the Sunday Sammy so it's grilled sandwich made of cinnamon bread, Minnesota strawberry jam, vanilla cream, fresh strawberries, whipped cream, toasted peanuts, confetti sprinkles, and flaked sea salt. There is also gluten-free and vegan options available of this sandwich. Okay. So. (laughs) I'm not sure why you're debating or why you're holding back. It's a yes for me. Like, I know that my pancreas is just pissed. <laughs> like, it is like, really, motherfucker? Like, like yeah. you're not diabetic, but you're going to be. <laughs> right. Like, I I like the idea of this. I I like the idea of this. I'm, I'm, I'm holding back. Okay. Because I have to sit here and think about this for a minute from a couple of perspectives. And one of them is, would I eat this in general? Mm. First of all. And yeah. then my, 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 my first thought is kind of no. Okay. But then I add on to it, would I eat this if I were at a fair? Okay. Right? There's a difference. There's a, there's a, so, like, we've kind of been going on about this, but, like, at a fair, you're kind of, it's sort of like a vacation. So you're going to indulge a little bit in things you may not normally eat. You may not normally want to have all that, like all those good, like scents, like deep fried and deep fried dough and sugar and salty, savory, all these like different like scents and flavors are usually all over the place. Um, so having said that, would I eat this at a fair? Absolutely. This looks like a fair food. Right. I, I will say this. Um, I find it interesting, David, that you're like, okay, would I get this normally? Like, no. But if I was at a fair, I would definitely get it. I would probably order it if it was on the menu someplace. But what's interesting is, you know, this picture, it shows it wrapped in like a paper, um, mm-hmm. you know, black and white checkered kind of like a paper film wrap, you know, around the outside edges. So it's meant to be eaten by a, as a sandwich, but they also recognize it's going to be a little messy. So like they're conceptually thinking this thing through about the portability factor, like you were saying earlier. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like I would probably make it as a dessert on a menu in a place that like has kind of fun, kitschy, you know, unique items. Right. This would definitely be a like something for the kids and the adults. I would probably already have it pre-portioned, like try Mm -hmm. to cut the bread into like four strips or something to make like, you know, sections to make it easier or something maybe. Right, right, right. I don't know. I don't know. But mm. yeah, so um, I, it was something that I definitely would probably end up. Uh, there we getting. go. Um, so next up is called T T Rock Rockets. T Rock Rockets. It's T I R O K. 
Um, so I think it's Kiro Croquettes. Oh, thank you. I'm like trying to figure this out. I'm like, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> um, it's from Dino's Gyros. Uh, so this is a mix of spicy feta, cream cheese, and mozzarella blended with Dino's or Dino's Greek seasoning, then rolled in a gluten-free panko, deep fried, sprinkled with lemon juice, Parmesan cheese, and Dino's seasoning. It is uh, gluten-free and vegetarian, it says. So right now what we're looking at are five deep fried balls with white stuff on them. Um, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> what? It does, it's the Parmesan cheese or whatever. Right. There's like, it, it's not quite flake salt, but you know, so it's not a yeah. lot to look at um, in this picture right. that they gave. They didn't like cut one open. So you have a cross section or anything, but I'm like, well, if it's cheese, if it's a blend of cheeses and it's breaded and deep fried, I mean, it's going in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like I, this, yeah. Like if I saw this on a, a, a on an appetizer menu, like at at a Euro place or Mediterranean restaurant, right? I would definitely get this. Yeah, because it's just something. It sounds delicious. Yeah, w without a shadow of a doubt, this is a me thing. I mean, I I love Greek food, um, and so I'm like, yeah, that that's the hands down. And the fact that there's several of them. Makes it an mm -hmm. easy sharing item. Mm -hmm. So if there's like two of us, and if I pay for it, bitch, I get three, you get two. That's how it works. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just how I, it's how I roll. If there's four of us, I get two, everybody else gets one. Um, you know, I mean, it, yeah, it's just, that's kind of thing. So it's interesting. I, is it original? Nah, not really. No. Just a bunch of cheeses, deep fried. Got it. Now this one, <laughs> the tot dog. It's an all beef hot dog dipped in corn dog batter, rolled in a mixture of minced tater tots, cheddar cheese, onions, and then deep fried. If you want to talk about something that is the classic fair food kind of item, it's on a stick. It's carbs. It's protein. It's fatty. It's deep fried. Like, mm -hmm. what more do you want? So, than to walk around at a state fair shoving something phallic in your mouth. I mean, let's be honest. It's like the newest version of a corn dog. It this was the this was the thing that almost won out. Okay. So so this was my second. This would have been my second choice. Because I saw this and I was like, fair food? Absolutely. Something I would eat? Absolutely. Yeah. Like just like at a fair just because it just sounds interesting granted yes it's just deep fried hot dog and 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 tater tot and stuff right but god damn it doesn't sound good <laughs> right like I'm, I'm thinking like if, uh, no, it doesn't take anything to put this on a menu right you know like sonic drive-in restaurant chain you paying attention you could you could do this i would buy it that's hard I'm just it saying. Ain't that hard. You already got the corn dog. And you already got the tots. Are you just need to share the cheese and just <laughs> fire out of shit? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Right, yes. You ready okay. to move on? Yes. All right. So that's Minnesota. Now we're going to move on to the great state fair of Texas, one of the largest in the world. Um, this one has less items overall, but um, we're all, again, we're just going to go through a selection of them. The first one up is the top of the list. A bacon jam corn bomb. Right. Now, technically, it's plural. It says bombs. So it says crispy, savory, sweet with a little bit of heat. It's a warm bacon jam ladled over crispy corn hush puppies, then complemented with a drizzle of ranch dressing and topped with homemade candied jalapenos. This bursting with flavor shareable treat is sure to become a state fair favorite. Yeah, okay. Well, we're not... We're not part of the official judging panel, so anyways. <laughs> but I can tell by the way it was written, it was meant to win people over. Mm-hmm. And that's where my problem lies. Okay. So, this sounds very good, but I bet it's not. I think it, there's, it, there's I think it is so it going to be as good as you want it to be. Right. Right. Yeah. That's my problem. It, it, it has all these... It has all these interesting things, but I don't know if all those things go together. Um, uh, I mean, they go I together, mean, maybe, but... Maybe. I don't know if it excites me. 
like the the bacon jam part is is the thing that's are maybe bothering me. I would have loved this, and this is going to be really weird, if they had taken the warm bacon jam and somehow squished it into mm. the corn, the corn hush puppy thing. Right, kind of made it almost like a savory um, donut or right. blintz. Blint? No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Anyway, but like that idea. Right. Right. And no, that, then that's covered fair. it with the with the you gave you the candy jalapenos and the drizzle ranch like yeah and it's and and this the sizing portion is a little questionable to me of all the pictures of all the foods in this entire episode this is the one that kind of looks the smallest so I don't right. know what the price point is mm-hmm. so that would be my only reservation is like if I paid ten dollars and I get this I'd be like really mm. so there's that and you know you're probably spending that much on it. Ooh, maybe, but I'm a cheapskate, so you know. <laughs> All right, next up is the Big Tex Bowl. Now, this sounds pretty classic. It's mac and cheese. It says covered with your favorite toppings. So rich and creamy three cheese sauce, perfectly combined with cavatappi noodles, and then it's topped with smoked brisket, cheddar cheese, or sorry, sharp cheddar, French fried onions, chives, applewood smoked bacon, candied jalapenos, and a barbecue cream sauce. Are you catching a theme yet? It's barbecue people like that's like the right. one main thing that they keep circling back around to right and this is another one that i would probably pass okay because while it has a lot of flavors that i'm, I'm interested in i don't like i don't think i would want them all together okay although a brisket mac and cheese does sound delicious yeah. Uh, um, I mean, personally, I am really intrigued by it. This this picture is a little ridiculous because right. that poor bowl is just like overwhelmed with the amount that you're getting. So there's a part of me that's like, am I getting all of that? Is my $15, $17 going to give me that portion? Because that's important. Right. That is a share. If it's that big. Yeah then by all means I'm not I'm not eating this all on my own. This is being this is being shared with one or two other people, if me if not four. Right. <sighs> no, I agree. Mm. All right. Now this next one, y'all, this has to be a fair thing. This has to be a Texas thing. I've never <laughs> even heard of this before, but it had to be I had to bring it up to discuss it. A bucket of fries. <laughs> it is exactly what you think. It is a plastic pale bucket with a handle full of French fries. Only these are loaded fries topped with savory beef and bacon. This flavorful new food bullshit comes in a portable <laughs> bucket. Perfect to stroll around the fairgrounds with. Okay. If you're walking around the fairgrounds with this, you will be like, you will have to stop several times either to clean yourself off or because your heart is hurt. Oh, I was just thinking you got to eat enough of it down. Then you just like strap it to your kid's face like a feed bag (laughs) and just let them continue to eat the rest of the French fries in the bucket. You know, like (laughs) just this is. Yeah, no, again, I could I see this. Obviously, this is a very traditional. I feel like this is a very traditional fair you know, food, just a bucket of something like fries usually is easy because you can deep fry them and then just drop them in a bucket or right. whatever. And then the the beef and bacon and stuff is like, that's nice and all, but it's going to be a lot like, like fry, like nacho fries, not nacho fries, not like, but like, right. Nachos. No, no, no. I agree with you. But it, like it, it is going to be a bit of a thing to try to eat. Plus, they didn't really say anything about a sauce to hold it all together. Right. So I'm concerned about like the beef and the toppings, like just kind of falling off onto the ground or falling on my shirt. Okay, They are cheese fries. OK, so you do have cheese. So it looks like I'm looking at the picture on the page on me as I get really close up in my camera. No, uh, it does say loaded cheese fries, but that to yeah. me doesn't tell me, like, is it shredded cheese that then it, melts? Is it, it a cheese sauce? Like, I don't know. It looks like cheese sauce. Yeah. That's just what I'm looking at here. So, and this is going to be my nachos, bitch. I, I hate ordering things that are layered where, like, the main, like, delivery item is on the bottom and, mm. like, it's stacked up and then everything is dumped on top of it. So it's not evenly distributed. 
Right. So it's like when you get nachos and you go to pull out a chip and like you pull it out from the side and it's just the chip because it <laughs> was like, on it. Right. Because right. it was part of the way down. So that's one of my that's one of my things. Mm-hmm. So anyways, to me, this is more novelty than anything. I'm like, oh, OK, sure. I think if we got one for the table, <laughs> that's, if we got fries for the table, would, you, would you have some? If we got a bucket of fries for the table, would you eat some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next up is the Dallas Hot Bird Dog. So it says a state fair classic is reimagined to unveil a tasty union that's hearty, cheesy, and packed with heat. This is a smoked turkey frank dunked in a fiery seasoned batter in deep fried, then smothered with rich and creamy mac and cheese, topped with fried jalapenos, then drizzled with Cholula which is a Mexican flavored hot sauce for flavor that bites back. So I imagine this is a no for you from the get go because of all the heat, 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 heat. <laughs> got me. You got me. I haven't had to use this one all day, but. <laughs> right. It is a fact. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big spicy person, but I would probably get this. But it also for me is going to probably be a share. Like I'd be like, hey, does anybody want to go in on this? Because. I don't, one, know if I'm going to like the whole thing, and two, I would like to preserve my butthole a little. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be mean, but, like, it's it says dunked. So you it is all over this damn dog. Right, right. This deep-fried, seasoned, like, fiery batter. And then they cut it open, throw in mac and cheese, and then throw fried jalapenos and ch- Cholula, Cholula, on top of it right that's that's a spicy that's gonna hurt yeah that's gonna hurt here that's gonna hurt here that's definitely gonna hurt at the end as my former roommate friend said to me once "Ooh, that's a whole burner it gonna burn <laughs> it gonna burn the whole going in it gonna burn the whole going out mm-hmm. yeah Mm-mm. yeah so let's move on to something on the sweeter side of things this is a deep fried PB and Raz Brulee. Right. Now, let me read this description. This is the shabby chic of fair foods. <laughs> the seamless <laughs> marriage of an after school kid food, PB and J, and that special dessert you sometimes get at anniversary dinners at a five star restaurant as an adult. Then it says crab brulee. The two are melded perfectly together to blend different times of your life in one unforgettable food experience it is a deep fried peanut butter sandwich pocket is topped with thick and creamy vanilla cream with a turbinado sugar heavy sprinkling and broiled and caramelized to a hard shell top this deep fried pb and raz brulee is then dolled with a perfect helping of mixed berries to complete the de- beautifully delicious dessert right so i this was this was this was this was almost my pick. This was this was I was like, oh, okay. But unfortunately, and this is gonna be me, they lost me mm-hmm. on their description. Okay. It it kind of got muddled a little bit and I kind of wasn't sure what all this was supposed to be. And and then it kind of brought it back, but I was like, okay, I kind of got the idea, but I don't I don't think I'm gonna is it going to be as brulee creme brulee as I want it to be? Mm. And I don't think so, but I, I would be, I would be very tempted to have this. I would be very tempted to try this. My, it has one of my favorite flavors, which is peanut butter. Um, and then you have, excuse me, a PB and J kind of moment here going. And I'm kind of like, Oh, I could, I, I would try that. Okay, so, all right, I'll get this out of the way. I would definitely try it. I would definitely buy it. I might not even share it, because I have a feeling I'm going to like this. <laughs> all that said, I am highly annoyed that they take a freaking Smucker's Uncrustable and deep fry it and throw some shit on it, and they're selling it to me for, like, 12 or $15. I'm like, are you for real? So that's that's I, I mixed on this. Like, that's part of my beef. For those of you that don't know, um, Smucker's is a major brand here in the U.S. that makes jams and jellies. And probably six, eight years ago, maybe now they've been around for a while. They came out with this thing called an Uncrustable. It is a PB&J sandwich that is circular where there is no crust around it. It's basically 
they commercially like made what many moms made for years and years and years with their kids because some kids i don't know why don't like crust on their bread so they would just like cut off the crust and make this pb and j sandwich only this is sealed as a perfect circle Mm-hmm. And I will tell you, there was a shortage earlier this year. I'm sure we talked about it in a previous episode. I can't remember which yep. one. Um, I'm personally partial to the strawberry version. Um, but they were out recently, again, of the strawberry locally. So I got some great. But you buy them frozen. You pull them out of the frozen. They're individually packaged. Uh, it takes 30 minutes to 60 minutes to thaw. You don't put them in the fridge because your fridge will dry the bread out. Um, and they're super convenient and tasty and handy. Um, they make a great snack. Uh, you know, so I, conceptually, I'm down with this. I'm just annoyed by the fact that they're taking something that, you know, commercially already exists and just modifying it. Mm. I'm just saying. Well, damn. Everything all right? Yeah, just um, there's an overload in the corner. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, Deep fried peach cobbler soul rolls. Mama. <laughs> So it says, uh, peach cobbler sole rolls are filled with juicy sweet peaches that are bathed in butter and are house spiced sugar mixture before being rolled into an egg roll and then deep fried. Topped with a generous amount of cinnamon sugar served with a side of bluebell ice cream. If you wish. Or if you desire, excuse me, is what it says. So this was my favorite. Okay. This was my thing. This was my like. If I oh, if I saw this, I would I would be I would jump at the opportunity, because you're you're talking about so many things that ring in my ear as delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, peach gobbler, boom, like deep fried, boom, like a kind of roll, boom, <laughs> you know, uh, blueberry ice cream. That's fine. Whatever. I can have that on the side or not at all. And I'm cool with that. I like, I don't, I don't like, and this is a personal opinion. I don't like hot and like, I don't like cold ice cream on top of hot items. Okay. But that's just me. The whipped cream would be enough for me. Um, But, oh, yes. Absolutely, I would have this. I would try this. This sounds delicious. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's definitely a yes for me. It's it's so like straightforward. Um, it's basically deep fried peach pie. Mm-hmm. You know, conceptually, that that's what we're talking about here. So yeah, I I thought that was that was a given. Um, next up, <clears throat> something I've never heard of before. <laughs> Frozen Probably got to do this Gary. Frozen ranch water. Well, hear hear it out, hear it out. Cuz when we hear the word ranch here in the US, a lot of us think of ranch dressing or ranch seasoning. Um this is not that. It says it's one of the most popular cocktails in Texas. It's called ranch water, which is simply a cocktail consisting of silver tequila, topo chico, which is a mineral spring water, and fresh lime. And that's it. Like Three mm-hmm. things in a in a plastic bottle with a straw, um, and then it says you can also get flavor topper uh, toppers such as passion fruit, paloma, raspberry, watermelon, if you want to sweeten it up. It is for twenty one and over only, um, but basically, you know, it's a refreshing cocktail technically because mm-hmm. it's got tequila in it. So <laughs> tequila, yeah, <laughs> tequila. Is yes, that what you're? Yes, <laughs> you've not heard that before. <laughs> Um, okay, reading what it said, okay, I would, I would give this a taste, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would give it a taste. Yeah, I, I mean, I would probably get one. Here's the thing, we're in Texas, 
is probably hot. Be hot. Mm-hmm. Right. So I could see myself wanting to get one of these. This is not what I want to hydrate with, though. True. Like, I would I would go for the fresh lemonade or the limeade mm. or whatever I could find that was, you know, much more refreshing. And right. And pray that ha- they have pebble ice. Um, <laughs> I want that good sonic ice. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up as we're wrapping up Texas, uh, gobble balls. Because <laughs> who doesn't want to gobble up some balls, right? <laughs> So these are turkey nuggets that are smoked, then breaded and deep fried. Bite-sized treat comes with your choice of a barbecue dipping sauce. Right. Pretty straightforward. Just right. turkey and nuggets, right? Yeah. It. I, I saw this and I was kind of like, oh, okay. That, that might work. I might try that. I do like that the turkey is smoked. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's going to be the part that, that would have drew me in. And I was like, because I, I, I will admit, I saw these and I kind of went past it because I was like, you got to give it a different name. <laughs> <laughs> or not, because we're all perverts. Yeah. But um, it was it was pretty decent. It was, it sounded pretty good. I could have, I would give it a shot. Like, given, like, looking at this and seeing that it was multiple, this would be kind of like a, here's some for the table kind of moment. Like uh, Agreed. This portion size looks decent um, as in it's easily shareable because I'm looking at probably about 12. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking maybe 10 to 12 of these balls, quote unquote um, of this smoked Turkey meat that's been, you know, uh, breaded and fried. So yeah, yeah, definitely a, a thing that, that would be, I, we would need more sauce because that one little cup of sauce ain't going to, ain't going to cut it. That's fair. I would be okay with just the one cup, but that's because I'm not probably going to care that much about dipping all of them into the sauce. Yeah. But if you're sharing, I think you're right. Like you probably would ask for a second like sauce cup or ramekin mm-hmm. or side or whatever. Right. right when right. it comes to that. Next up is the Southern fried lemon ice box pie balls. If you're not catching on to the theme here, balls is the word <laughs> barbecue is the main cuisine. <laughs> And it's deep fried, but it says a pie ball, uh, hand wrapped in pate sucre dough, is infused with graham crackers, lemon zest, and brown sugar. The filling is our secret family recipe for lemon ice box pies. The pie balls are then battered in our chicken fry and flash fried to create a golden flaky crust. Then we sprinkle the fried pie balls with sweet fairy dust made of honey, butter powder, and confectioner sugar. Atop that, we top the balls with dollops of chantilly cream, garnish them with a lemon graham cracker crumble, lemon zest, and edible gold glitter. So y'all trying to be fancy. <laughs> that, that's, that's it. That's it. That's it. Because, baby, yeah. it is a deep fried handheld pie. Right. So why y'all gotta get all fancy up in this shit? No, no, kid, no, 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 no. All shade aside, right. um, this sounds interesting to me. Mm-hmm. I am not the biggest lemon pie fan. Okay, I know Jim is. I think he would actually enjoy this. Hi, sweetie. Um, what would I enjoy? Well, if you well, don't come over. But <laughs> 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 well, you could come, but you're going to be on screen. Well, just tell me what would I enjoy? Okay, hold on. Sorry. Everyone, it's Southern Fried Lemon Ice Box Pie Balls. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably just a version of Lemon Ice Box Pie. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't like lemon. I, I'm okay with lemon. I like some lemon. Then I'll make you an ice box pie. And maybe I'll fry, their, I'll fry its balls. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you so much. Cool. Oh God! You'll make a male one. You know, so have pie. I'm both have balls. So to have balls. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, But yeah. So, but again, like, like this would probably you say if we Jim and I, like, we've had this conversation. Like, you and Jim and I are on are at this Texas State Fair, and we happen to see this. I I think Jim would be intrigued enough to buy it, and I'd be like, okay, cool. Let me have some. Right, like you would, would taste, taste it. Right. <clears throat> you might it's have not, one or two bites, but you're not like 
wanting a whole portion or whatever. I would not want a whole portion of this. Yeah. Like that portion looks huge. Um, and that's a ball. Right. Like, so to be fair, this picture, when you're looking at it, each half or each ball, quote unquote, looks like the size of the palm of my hand. Right. So that's pretty that looks sizable. Like high. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so yeah, but that was definitely one that drew my attention. And then mm-hmm. last but not least, we could not pass up talking about East Texas Easter eggs. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so here we go, kids. So just for those that are listening, we are looking at a four like divot card like cardboard kind of like egg holder. So if you think about those like like recyclable egg holders that hold a dozen, it's like they cut it into thirds. Um, It comes with a top that matches to it. And there are two of these eggs in here with two dipping sauces. So here's the description. Mildly spicy, creamy cheddar cheese deep fried eggs will make you wish you had an Easter basket full of them to take home. While they are not actually eggs from a chicken, they are filled with meats, spices, cheese, peppers, and all things Texas, shaped like an egg, direct decorated with a savory Easter-colored ranch sauce, breaded, deep-fried, and served in our special Texas Easter egg carton with a perfect finishing dipping sauce. Okay. <sighs> Y'all. Okay. So, um, I saw this. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Because <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, let me, I have to read what this is. They, so are, the, they are trying way too hard. That part. Um, <laughs> and that was where I, it kind of lost me. I was cool with the concept. It's kind of like a scotch egg, except I, I think even a scotch egg is, no. No. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the scotch egg has a hard boiled egg in the center. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was missing. It has egg in it. So thank you. Um, but this was, this is, you know, this is obviously not that. This is just an egg shaped meat cheese thing. You lost me. <clears throat> you lost me on the savory Easter colored dipping ranch, the di- Easter colored ranch sauce. So when you so, look at this picture, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, ain't it? They, right. they, this is a model photo, obviously, but they went ahead. So th- basically, these are croquettes. Like mm-hmm. it is, it is uh, a croquette is typically a bunch of stuff mashed together, breaded, deep fried, like in an in an oval or circular kind of like cone shape or whatever. So that's really what this is. It's a savory croquette. Um. Because it says it has meats, spices, and cheeses, and peppers, but it doesn't really describe, give you a breakdown of all the things, and it's it, but it's egg shaped, right? But the killer is that they have like three colors of ranch dressing that they have dyed in Easter colors and drop dipped, like d- did drops on the outside eggs to make them speckled, to kind right. of make them look like a decorated Easter egg, right? And that, no, uh, no, it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't thrill me. It makes me, it makes me scared. <laughs> like, like in all honesty, it scares me a little because it's a weird look to it. And like I said, looking at the picture, I'm kind of like, what, what is this? Why is there, why is there like candy coated? Why is there candy on my savory, like chocolate, not chocolate, my savory meat cheese, you know, croquette thing? Why is this thing? And then I read and I was like, oh, so we're trying to be like fun and kooky and funny and and make right. They're really playing on the whole. Songs. They're playing on the whole juxtaposition of like what right. it looks like is a is a chocolate truffle, you mm-hmm. know, like a powdered dipped chocolate truffle with like some candies on the outside. Right. That's very large. It's the size of an egg. But the reality is, Mama, it is all savory. There is nothing right. sweet about this. Right. Yeah. And that's going to be the part that plays plays with my brain. But having said that, I would probably try this. Okay. It hits like it's meat and cheese, like deep fried. 
Like, right. Why not? No, I, I agree with you. There's, there's definitely something about it. Sure. Be right back. Mama has to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners uh, and viewers, this takes us through three of the states we have gone through. Let me check them now. How many we've done? We've done one, two, three. So we've gone through 24 foods out of this 100, almost 200 items. Like we we pre-selected a couple of things. So we're down to the last state, um, which is going to be Wisconsin, uh, a great another great northern state. Um, this one has at least one very questionable item uh, that I put into the list. And I'm pretty sure Damon is going to be very displeased by it. Um, but we'll see what that is here in a moment when he comes back. So, yeah, uh, so we only have a few left uh, to discuss out of this, but, you know, tell us what your thoughts are. You know, comment on our YouTube channel when the video goes up. You can um, reach out to us. We'll discuss that at the end of the episode, what your communication options are. But I'd be interested to know what your, some of your thoughts are on some of these foods. Are they ridiculous? Are they trite? Are they overdone? Is it, you know, too traditional, too, you know, sensational? <laughs> I held it as long as I could, girl. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I understand. Woo. Okay. So, as I was telling the audience, uh, we're down to our last state, which is Wisconsin, with a couple of items left. Now, I already know one of these is going to be a bother for you and probably a great many people. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> This one is called a bug apple on a stick. It is a chocolate covered apple that is coated with edible June bugs, crickets, worms, and ants all served on a stick. Cause you'll be in a fun at the fair state of mind when you take a bite out of the bug apple. Pass. Fucking pass. <laughs> nope. Walking right fucking by it. Ain't even giving it a second glance. If I had hadn't had the opportunity to see this during this, like because it was listed on this list, wouldn't have even no. Uh uh. Mm mm. Uh uh. Nope. No. 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 I am not. I don't care how much chocolate is on a fucking bug. It's still a fucking bug. No. That's fair. <laughs> I, I'm 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 in the I'm in the camp of a pass. I'm not interested. I can I can hear Drew right now saying, "What do you mean you wouldn't try it?" I'm like, mm, "It is just not my gig. It is no, not, that's not my thing." Now, if you took the bugs off and like you cut that apple into like little slices and what have you, I might give it a try. No, but yeah, well. no, like and then okay, so like no, because it's not oh. It's not just the, the edible. It's not just the chocolate coated June buds. It's also like crickets and and worms and ant. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. ma'am. So never mind. Take all the rest. No, just no. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. So let's move on to something more enjoyable. Hopefully. So this is chicken bacon ranch waffle stick. Oh. Now this cracks my ass up. There is nothing original about this, for the record. Right. It says juicy white. Meat chicken baked into a delicious Belgian waffle served on a stick drizzled with ranch dressing topped with real bacon. If y'all haven't figured out what the American diet comprises of. <laughs> Here you go. Right. You're starting you're starting to catch on. We we want fat. We want, you know, kind of possibly messy. We want fried. We want savory. But we, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just it's I like this. Um, I doubt it's as portable as it should, could be, um, cause it looks like it's, uh, let me get to my picture here on the, the bigger picture here. It looks like, is the chicken in the waffle? That's what it says. It is bacon. Okay. It's baked in. Okay. It's, yeah. I know why it's not going to be, it's going to be bad. It's because it's drizzled with the ranch and the bacon is put on top. So you're going to get these little dollops of globs of like bacon and ranch which kind of defeats the purpose of having them so you can have it you can eat it but this is going to be like a sit down like right you have to be careful with this one right although we need to adopt the serving little... it on a plate on a 
like a wood plank like that. Yeah, I don't know. That's for show. I'm, they're not giving yeah. wood planks out at the fair, baby. Like that. That's, that's no, that ain't gonna happen. Practical. No. 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 So <sighs> would I get it? Yes. Like. Yeah. Same. Most most likely without even thinking twice about it. Um, probably foolishly would get it before I saw what other options at the at the fair were. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. The Chili Cheeseburger Colossal Onion. The Chili Cheeseburger Colossal Onion is a fresh colossal onion, otherwise known as an awesome awesome onion blossom, um, if you're familiar with that. Topped with loaded homemade Angus chili and cheddar cheese and a side of chipotle mayo dipping sauce. So basically, you take a bloomin' onion, and if you don't know what a bloomin' onion is, you take a whole onion... You use a special apparatus to basically um, smash it partially and like wedge it open, so it makes all these beautiful layers and petals. And then you uh, you end up coating it in like flour, seasoning, and that kind of stuff. You batter, deep fry it, and it makes this beautiful big like flour. Uh, it's edible that you know that you can eat. And then they decided to like take out a little bit of the center, and then they just pile shit on it <laughs> right and that is my problem okay. with this one it it's not gonna be good well no no, no that's not true let me rephrase it's gonna be hard to eat okay this is again another like you're sitting down and eating this this is not a walk around kind of thing if you're walking around with this i'm sorry you're gonna have it all over you um that's Even fair. if you're sitting down, you're probably going to have this, you know, a lot of this on you. Um, I like blooming onions. It's one of the few like onion things I eat because um, I'm not a fan, especially not a fan of raw onion. But like cooked onion, even is sometimes like eh for me. But this, in this instance, like a blooming onion, I'm fine with. This, I would not be because it's just layering stuff on top of something that was already kind of good to begin with. Yeah. I feel like if I was to get this, this is definitely a shareable dish. I want four to six people because mm -hmm. we're going to destroy it. It's going to be messy. Like, right. We need to sit down at a table and just, you know, demolish it, get it over with what clean ourselves up. up and then keep on trucking. <laughs> Grab a bunch of napkins and like probably have some wet night wet naps <laughs> <Woo. laughs> where am i from hello kentucky <laughs> wet naps and and kind of wipe ourselves off so we can move on right speaking of moving on the donut dog okay girl we don't this even have it's, well, this is a fresh glazed Long John donut, which is the bun, with an all beef hot dog wrapped in bacon. Shocker. Deep fried. More shocking. And it has a drizzle of sweet icing for the final touch. I, oh, y'all, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> So this goes back to what I think I have listed and pinned on my Twitter, which is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. Like this, this does not sound good. Like, I just don't, I don't want to be that person. It also doesn't look that good. No, it doesn't. Like, I, I was just looking at the picture and I was like, oh, that don't look good. Um, I'm oh. trying to, where's the bacon? Oh, no, it's wrapped around, fairly wrapped Correct. around the dog. Yeah. Okay. So they take a hot dog. Skewer mm -hmm. it, wrap bacon around it, throw it in the fryer, cook it, pull it out, and then they put it inside of this uh, glazed donut, long john bun. donut. Like they like they slice the long john donut open like it's a bun, like a hot dog bun. Stick it in the middle, drizzle mm -hmm. the, the sweet sweet icing over top of it, and I'm just like, mm. no. See, and then like to be honest, you lost me with the the the, the you also lost me with the drizzle. Yeah. Like the icing, no. If I'm wanting a donut dog, I don't need the icing drizzle. I want like the donut to be enough sweetness for me to enjoy the savoriness of this dog that is apparently wrapped in bacon and then deep fried. Um, again, clog the arteries. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know if you got all that, but whatever. I know. Um, it just it just is not for me. Right. No, I agree. Like if I, if I read this description, I'd be like, oh, y'all trying too hard. I just keep on trucking. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up is flaming hot Cheetos chicken on a stick. Not to be confused with Chico stick, the candy. If you've ever had that here in the U.S. Right. Um, so this is deep fried chicken skewered and breaded with a special seasoning blend and then uh, coated in flaming hot Cheeto dust. Drizzled with Chipotle ranch sprinkled with a top secret seasoning that is certain to bring some spice to your life. Okay. So again, the spiciness is probably the no for me automatically. Right. But this does sound interesting. Mm hmm. I could see you having a bite if somebody else got it and was willing to share. Huh? <laughs> Did you go someplace? Sorry, the, 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 the connection is getting... It went. It dropped for me for a second. That's okay. But what did you say? It looked like you were meditating when I said I could see <laughs> someone ordering this and then you having a single bite just so you could taste it. But that's when it looked like you were meditating, and I was like, okay, maybe not. Maybe David's like, not even then. Not even then. Yeah. So, uh, like, so FYI, sorry, patrons and and everyone that's watching this potentially, I am having like the connection just. Pops in and out every little, every once in a while. So, it, it, whatever. Um, it is what it is. Uh, so yes, I would probably try this, but I would definitely not get this. This is definitely kind of like just the spice and stuff alone is enough for me. I don't like flaming hot Cheetos, but if someone, like you said, if someone were to buy, get this and be like, "Do you want some?" I'd be like, "I'll take a bite." Right. I'd probably regret it a little bit, but. The, the the idea intrigues me. Right. Now, I think they could definitely do a savory version of this. So I think they could do regular Cheetos. And um, I would be really happy if they did like a lime aioli, like mm -hmm. kind of drizzle. Um, do you know what I mean? Like as a more non-hot like, version. This would be really good with a lime this one on its own would be really good with a lime aioli. Yeah. Like something like acidic to kind of add a little flavor punch to it. Yeah. All right. So moving right along. Speaking of, and in case you didn't catch it, the other theme is spicy. So this is a pino pretzel popper brat. So this is a 10 inch jalapeno cheddar bratwurst carefully wrapped in a fresh pretzel dough topped with coarse pretzel salt, fresh cut jalapenos, and baked until golden brown, then drizzled with a white cheddar sauce served with house-made jalapeno cream cheese. Mm. So, I'm really intrigued by this, but, like, Damon, like, I I'm not as, as concerned about the heat thing, but going through this long-ass list, I'm tired of everything being spicy. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently in Wisconsin, they don't get enough spice. So they're like, here, go to the fair and you can have all the spice you want. Like, yeah. Excuse me. So, again, this is a very interesting mix of flavors mm -hmm. that, as mentioned, not the biggest fan of spice, but I would probably be like, oh, let me give this a try because a cheddar bratwurst sounds really good. The pretzel dough sounds fun. The, the, you know, we can take a, the jalapeno off cause especially cause of the fresh one. No. Um, and then, but the white cheddar cheese sauce and then it's served with like this jalapeno cream cheese. That intrigues me. That interests me. I might give this a shot. Um, yeah, I really feel like if someone else got this and offered me one bite, I'd be like, okay, a bite, I will try, just sheerly mm -hmm. for the curiosity factor, but that's about as right. far as it goes. I'm just, I'm not feeling it, personally. This would not be something I bought. <laughs> right. Now, this, on the other hand, this is called the Scony 
slugger or maybe scony slugger not sure which um so this is a beer brat and cheese curd that is then dipped in cruller cornmeal batter it is a stick work of art that is deep fried and topped with dijonese and then german sweet and sour cabbage now German sweet and sour cabbage is a thing that some people are pretty like yes no about, but that's what that mm-hmm. dark purple kind of stuff is that you see on there. So David David's like no <laughs> on the on the kraut. <laughs> I like sauerkraut. This is this is this is not sauerkraut. That's this true. Is something else, and yeah. it's not it. Oh. oh. So here's my question: If you could get the cabbage not on it, would you still be interested in it? Maybe, because it's a it's a beer brought with cheese curds, so yeah. they're all skewered and then cornmeal, yeah. cruller battered, deep fried. Yeah. yeah, and then they so have like a this drizzle. So for me, per so I am not the biggest fan of beer brats. Okay, I need like a cheddar worst or something along those lines. Um, I can't eat just a, a brat, and Jim knows this. Uh, with that being said, though, you 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 bring me back in when you put cheese curds in there. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, Damon loves cheese. Damon loves cheese. Um, and then like this cruller cornmeal batter. That's interesting. Yeah. So would I would I give this if I could get the German sweet and sour cabbage off or on the side? I would probably give it a try. Uh, this would be one like I would say Jim is buying and then I'm having a bite. Yeah. Um, uh, for sure. That's probably going to be that would probably be the case. Um, and it, I might actually like it because. Deep frying the, the broth and, and all that kind of flavor would come come into play and I'd be like, oh, I like this. Yeah. I might um, like that. That's fair. Rephrase. All right. So this next one is not original by any means. But the fact that it's on the fair list intrigues me. Mm-hmm. So this is St. Louis or St. Louis gooey butter cake. A golden brown top crust, rich cream cheese middle, and a buttery chewy bottom in vanilla or chocolate. Frozen on a stick and topped with choice of nuts, fruits, syrups. Now, this picture does not show it on a stick. Right. It just looks like squares of gooey butter cake. If you've never had gooey butter cake in your life first of all i'm sorry for you because right. you're missing out right. um but so the picture doesn't quite exactly match the description but i'm very intrigued by this concept of mm-hmm. gooey butter cake on a stick with toppings same same so i this is a this is probably a, a my wallet will easily open <laughs> for this <item. laughs> like hmm let me give this a shot. Yeah, agreed. I don't. I like this idea. Um, I would not go to Wisconsin to have a St. Louis, you know, or St. Louis like butter cake. Mm. I would just St. Louis. But um, having said that, if this was, I was in Wisconsin and I saw this, I'd be like, oh, let me give this a try. Yeah, like or, I, if or, I was in, especially I, if I was in the mood for something sweet, mm-hmm. um, as a as a dish to to you know really have something on the dessert side of stuff um, to compliment that. And then last but not least, I'm just going to say this. I don't think this is original by any means of the imagination. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will give them the props for coming up with something that will definitely sell because Mm -hmm. you know, people cannot pass up the concept of this. Now, for those that are not here in the U.S. are familiar with the concept of a walking taco. Right. So a walking taco is basically a handheld small bag of corn chips. And then you put your meat and your toppings on top of it. And you take a spoon or a spork or a fork and you basically eat it out of the bag as you're walking around. Mm-hmm. When I heard of walking tacos like about six, seven years ago, I was like, what in fresh hell is this shit? <laughs> I was like, how lazy can Americans be that we got to put stuff in a bag and just eat it out of the bag that way? But I digress. 
So now, fast forward to 2022, and the Wisconsin State Fair has this thing called a walking banana explosion. This is a bag of vanilla wafers, which are like uh, small circular vanilla kind of shortbread cookies, but much lighter, Mm -hmm. not as dense. They are topped with vanilla pudding, sliced bananas, a nutty bar, and finished with whipped cream and a cherry for a reinvented banana dessert. So this is really hearkening and calling on everybody who loves Nana pudding. Right. Right. Um, this was, this was, yeah, this, I saw this like, oh, this is really good. I, I, I don't know if I would, again, <laughs> it's weird to me to spend the money on, put something together that I could probably put, spend the money on something that I could probably put together myself. Right. Um, like, I think you could show this to Jim and he'll be able to make this tomorrow for you easily for dessert. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe not. He'd have to get the things, you know, you have to buy the, the separate things, but this is easy. But. You hit me with banana pudding. Now, had it been banana pudding and not vanilla pudding with bananas on it, sold immediately. Uh-huh. I would have bought the fucker out of this. Oh. I like banana pudding, though. Well, here's the thing. Do you like homemade real banana pudding or are you okay with banana flavored pudding? The first one. Uh- <laughs> right, because... <laughs> I personally have an intolerance to banana flavored things. Mm. So for those that don't know, you can you can internet search it online. And I'm sure it's in a Wikipedia. Banana flavoring in foods is made from a different variety of banana. There are basically two bananas, main banana is left in the world varieties. And the one that we eat, I think, is called Cavendish, if I remember correctly, or it's vice versa, and I can't remember the right name of the one that we eat. And then there's a name for the other one that they make flavoring out of. And, like, I know people that go nuts for banana-flavored things, and I'm like, like, I just, <laughs> I know I can tell the difference, and I, and they are not the same, and I do yeah. not like banana-flavored things. So when I go someplace and they say, oh, we have a banana cream pie, and then I have to ask them, I'm like, is it homemade? Like, is the banana cream homemade from scratch with real bananas? It's not shade, girl. It's it's me wanting to know if I'm going to put my money down and I'm going to spend four, five, six, seven goddamn dollars on a slice of pie. It better be the real deal. I'm right. not paying for, you know, flavored crap. No offense. <laughs> yeah. It's like, could I eat? Could I tolerate it with banana pudding with like banana flavored pudding? Probably, but that would be the thing, though, and that would be the, probably the thing that would um, piss me off the most. And there we go. <sighs> it's okay. You're still there. Are you coming back? <laughs> I'm still here. There we go. You're still here. We could hear you. You just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me all i know is like suddenly it gets really really quiet and i feel like i'm talking to myself and i have to stop because like i don't feel i don't want to talk to myself no it's okay anyway anyway so having said that this would be like the disappointment for me kind of Mm. if i were to get this and they said it was banana pudding but it was like banana flavored pudding I would eat it, but I'd be like, oh, like I want banana pudding. Right. But it's technically vanilla pudding. Yeah. So in, it's, this, in this case, it's vanilla pudding. Right. So, it, so it's, it's Nana pudding like dessert. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what they're really playing off of. If you've ever had it, um, it's very easy to make. You put the vanilla wafers in the bottom of a casserole dish. You put your vanilla pudding on top. You put your bananas on top of that. You probably mm-hmm. put like a cool whip or you know mm-hmm. some type of whip topping on top of that. If you're going to splurge, then you got like you know chopped up nuts, maraschino cherries, whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but this is the walking version. So yeah, like I c- I could see this. 
It's definitely a novelty thing. I would probably keep walking because the line is probably motherfucking long and I ain't waiting in that line. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that I had, is this the last one? Um, it is out of, out of all the items that I had picked out of what we had. Was there anything that I skipped by chance that drew well, your was attention? One, or? So one thing, it was actually this one that normally you've hit all the ones that I had that were my favorite Okay. on this thing. This was the only one that, that you didn't grab it. And I have to go up and find it. And it was literally the third thing on the list. And it's batter infused white cheddar cheese curds. Um, oh, okay. Says, so, yeah, in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, we were in Wisconsin. Like, this is a thing. But this was the part that intrigued me. So, it says, different from traditional fried cheese curds, the batter-infused white cheddar cheese curds are not a normal beer-battered curd. The seasoned flour is mixed into the cheese itself and then cut into cubes and deep-fried for a delicious taste without the breading on the outside. Served with a side of ranch. And that's what caught me. Because mm-hmm. we've all had like deep, you know, deep fried cheese curds. We all, we've seen them. They're all over the place. Um, they're great. They're good. Um, love them. That's what caught me. And I was like, oh. So you're doing something a little different. You're giving it a little twist. And it's not a necessarily a twist that is a fad we're not just throwing something on top of something it's definitely a different flavor and a different taste and a possibly even a different texture and right. that's what intrigued me right i'd be curious about it it's the one like it was the one thing that i was like oh let me give this a shot i would definitely give this a shot or share it i think it's interesting that you picked it out because i did see it and i read it and I was like, well, that's different. And then I kind of moved on. Like, <laughs> only because I'm like, so it's not battered. It has the seasoned flour, quote unquote, within it. So there's a part of me that's like, so it ain't going to taste really all that different, probably. Yeah. There, and that that's the possibility. Um, but I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that's fair. Yeah, there was, I mean, there was definitely other things, you know, that I, I didn't um, pull out of this, you know, like, for example, in Minnesota, they had Reuben rolls. Um, mm-hmm. I've had them before. So to me, that's not original. Um, you know, uh, the mini berry, blueberry pie, it's a handheld pie. I'm like, well, that's not different. Uh, Sunday, you know, I mean, like, there, there's just um, deep fried ice cream. Had it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so that's where I'm kind of like, no, no, no some of those aren't really all that original yeah um, so there was there was one other thing that caught me by surprise that i was kind of i i don't know if i would like it or not mm-hmm. as it was again wisconsin and it was the dirty martini dip with homemade chips um i remember that but yeah yeah it's a it has it says uh has all the flavors of your favorite drink minus the booze. Our homemade chips are made make this a portable, irresistible, shareable snack. I don't want to necessarily call it portable. Um, our boat, a boat of our house homemade, lightly seasoned potato chips, surround a plastic martini glass filled with a combination of cream cheese, blue cheese, mayonnaise, green olives, red onions, and seasonings of your for your dipping pleasure. Garnished with a whole green olive. On a pick, of course. Okay. I know why I passed this up. And this is totally on me. So I apologize to everybody. Um, because it has two things in it that I would not tolerate, which is green olives and blue cheese. <laughs> 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 so I would have just, like, I would have stood and waited while you waited in line. I would have been supportive. But you would have been like, do you want one? I'd be like, no. <laughs> You're like, you don't want a bite? No. Mm-mm. You can have all of it. Nice. 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 Uh, but yeah, this was this was good. This was a good fun food time, but now I'm hungry again. Yeah, sorry so. about that. <laughs> and apologies to all of our uh, listeners, audience, viewers. Uh, now, if you're like super hungry, I realize if you're watching the video, all of these graphic, like, you know, kind of cartoony representative items around us don't necessarily match to the items, but that's okay. Like, these are just yeah. classic American foods that, you know, at one time probably originated at a fair. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I should have said this is the top of the show. If you don't know what a state fair is or a county fair, 
um, it's a way for um, a lot of things to come together. So it's an amusement park. Um, so mm-hmm. there's usually amusement rides, like a Ferris wheel, a small like roller coaster, uh, maybe a Tilt-A-Whirl, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like a spinny um, kind of ride. Like there's a bunch of different kind of things. It's very popular usually with, the, with you know, teens and young adults. Um, and then there's usually like a midway where there's all these booths and you can like try games of chance. So you can put, try to bounce a ping pong uh, into a bowl <laughs> that has a goldfish in it. Um, you can like have someone guess your weight. You can try to use the strongman hammer, see if you can ring the bell, um, knock things over with a baseball. Like, you know, so you yeah, win prizes yeah. of different kinds. Um, yeah. In that case, there's like all these food things. There's sometimes an agricultural aspect to it. So they're like showing off like, you know, prize winning animals that have been, you know, well cared for and like, um, you know, presented. So it's a, it's a big, big deal. And these particular states that we went over today are some of the biggest in the nation and infamously have like new foods each year. So that's part of why we went over that. Mm -hmm. So if you've tried any of these items by chance or, as I was saying uh, earlier, have opinions, by all means, you are welcome to let us know. There are several ways that you can do that. You can go to CubsOutloud.com, our blog website, and you can leave a comment on the post there. Or you can send us an email by going to CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail message. You can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255 and leave us a voicemail, we'd be happy to play it. Uh, or you can find us on our various social media outlets, uh, basically Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, just type in Cubs Out Loud as one word. If you would like to join our chat on Telegram, the chat platform, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen col. If you want to know uh, when we're typically live on shows, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen col as a production note. Um, Damon and I are going to be traveling. We're taking vacation, not together, but we will be in the same place. (laughs) And so uh, we're going to be away for a couple of weeks. So uh, poor Jeff, by the time we come back and are live, it'll have been uh, almost a month, probably. (laughs) But uh, so we're going to do some flashback episodes for the next couple of weeks. And then uh, we'll be back live and uh, we'll get to you'll get to hear about our lovely trip to the south um, Mm -hmm. and this event that we're going to be going to. Um, in the meantime, if you would like to support Cubs Out Loud, there are several ways to do that. First of all, you can go to Zazzle.com, that's Z-A-Z-Z-L-E dot C-O-M, backslash Cubs Out Loud, and you can get various items there. So you can get t-shirts, like Damon and I are both wearing Consent is My Foreplay shirts. Mine happens to be the new Pride uh, colored version with the inclusive Ooh. Pride colors. Damon happens to be wearing, I think, the Bear Pride one. Yes. Um, but we also have a Puppy Pride, uh, a Leather Pride drag pride trans, pride trans pride like we've got a whole bunch of them um, but we've also got various items like coffee mugs uh different apparel items as well that you can uh, pick up at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and they're typically doing sales so even if you don't buy something right away you could um put in for to get on their email distro like they just sent another email today for like 25 percent off on some stuff so or if you'd like you can get a handy towel like damon has that he's holding up because you never know when you might be in a sticky situation and you need a little help. Just saying. Um, in addition to that, uh, like we were discussing, so Smashy the Bear helped design some of our different logos. If you would like to support him, you can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear um, to see his other design of shirts. I have several of them um, and we love him dearly for helping us with that. And if you would like to, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, we are really, really close. If we continue on the trend that we're going pretty soon, we're going to have an extra exclusive Patreon uh, gift uh, that folks will be getting where they get, uh, I believe it's every other month, a patron only um, episode. Um, so right now, if you're a patron, you get the bookends, I call them the beginning pre-show and the post-show of each of our episodes, as opposed to just like the main cut of it. And in addition to that, uh, you can just send us a donation. You can give us a one-time tip. It's okay. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud, make a one-time financial donation. We would greatly appreciate it. You can, of course, help promote us. You can find us online at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. And Damon, if they wanted to get in touch with you and discuss how 
they would like to win you over on pickle pizza, where would they do so? <laughs> you can certainly try. Um, <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most beer related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore ember on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Nice. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Um, I do have a Twitter that is also not safe for work, and that is GearBear73XXX. Several of you have found me on there recently. I have figured that out because your friend requested to follow me on there. And then I check out your profile, and I see who you're following. And I see that you're following people like Damon or other folks that I'm following on Twitter. So I see you. I see you. And with that, uh, this is the end of episode 664. Let's talk about food, the 2022 uh, Fair Foods of the Year. Um, as I said, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another live show. Uh, but do enjoy the flashback episodes that are about to come. And uh, we look forward to talking to you later on. Bye. Bye, everybody. We Ooh. made it to the end. Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, man. Let me tell you something. Um, I'm sitting here like I had I had gotten the water early and I was like, let me just have some water because, you know, I had sodas you know, all day. Let me have some water while I do the show. And I instantly regretted it because I was like, <laughs> like, not too long after we started the show, I'm like, I've got to pee. <laughs> and I know it's just you and me <laughs> and so I'm like I need to find I need to I'm you know just just hold it just hold it just hold it as much as you can and and you can get through it and then I, we'll be fine you'll be fine you can you know we'll get through it and then you can then go and I was like cool and we we not that the show like not that like I was, I was like, well, or you can just try to find a good stopping point, or at least a m point where you can like get away. And I was like, well, we're about to transition to another state. And I'm like, that's the perfect time. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad that you found your proper exit and was like, I got right. to go. Mm -hmm. So let me get out of here. Let me go, peace. please. Please. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> I got to evacuate. It will all be well in due time. Yes. Yes. That's give fair. Me, give me some time. Hoo hoo.